Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship for 2015. And welcome to StarCraft II. Yeah. Yep, the flags are flying. The passion is real. A live game. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we are almost at the end of the round of 16 now, and it has been a terrific run over the last couple of days. So let's just update you as to where we are right now. Seven games down, one to go. The results yesterday and today, some have been surprising, some haven't been surprising. We've had a couple of stomps, and we've had a couple of very, very good games indeed. Uh, if you weren't with us yesterday, you do want to go and check out Innovation Against Life. Fantastic match, one for the ages, absolutely, after their GSL clash last week. Also, uh, go and check out the Fantasy versus Rain game. Fantastic game from Fantasy. He's in red-hot form this week at the Intel Extreme Masters. Today, of course, we've had three of our matches so far, and we've also seen the Intel Extreme Masters king make it through to the quarterfinals. He's three out of four tournaments in the past, this one being his fifth. Time now for our final game of the round of the 16. And as we did yesterday, we've also left the best game of the day till last. And as you can probably tell, there's a little bit of bias with the crowd right now. <laughs> little bit. However, hold on to your chairs, folks. Our first player is a man who earned the Rookie of the Year award in Pro League in 2012. A year later, he was the MVP of the finals. In 2014, he won his first international tournament at MLG Anaheim. He is Junior Greenwing's Trap. His opponent does have some history. He was perhaps the greatest Brood War player of all time, although Boxer might want a word with you about that. Nevertheless, he came into StarCraft II as a man that everyone wanted to see win a tournament. And finally, at the Intel Extreme Masters in Toronto in 2014, it happened. His first title in StarCraft II. He is the ultimate weapon, ladies and gentlemen. Please make some noise for Flash! Okay, time to go over to our experts desk for the final time of the day and check out whether they think Flash has what it takes to take down our Jinair Green Wings champion. Thank you, Red Eye. That is the question of the moment. Which Flash will show up today? Was it the one from I Am Toronto, or is it the one who's struggling sometimes in Korea with the 50% win rate? Sometimes he's on, sometimes he's off. And you know, when we start this discussion, Snoot here with, uh, you've been able to see some of these Koreans <laughs> play today. A lot of Protoss was tearing, not too much Zerg, but I'm sure if there's one player that's not Zerg that you have to follow sometimes, it's a player like Flash. Do you think he comes in here to I Am World Championships with a chip on his shoulder? What kind of Flash do you think will show up today? I certainly hope it's the uh, Toronto Flash that we saw completely dismantled Cest. Th those were some amazing games, and uh, his micro in particular is something that really, you know, catches my uh, attention. Mm -hmm. uh, just the way he sometimes makes so many Marauders and then just splits everything apart, it's really magical to watch. Absolutely. Flash came through I am Toronto defeating MC twice, Scarlet. Snoot, 3-2. <laughs> Tasia and Zest in the finals. I actually didn't realize yeah. that. I would have built it up way more if I realized that, but I just kind of saw it on the, pro <laughs> on the yeah. road. There. Snoot, you had a hell of a time with these qualifiers, <laughs> yeah. man. Like, I think like a third of the players yeah. here actually had to get through Snoot in order to get to the I Am World Championships. He did. <laughs> and once again, it's it that really sink in for a second. It, it is. Yeah. It's sick. Like, there's nothing. You played and lost a Flash in an awesome match. Well, let me just say cool. that the Flash is incredible. And he was up 2-0. No. Yes. I heard about that. That's right. That, has, that happened like three times as well. Hey, if it was a best of three, you would have two owed flash. <laughs> Boom. Oh, man. Snoots are remembering everything right now. Let's He's move on quiet. to the next topic yeah. here. Flash uh, has never played Trap. Actually, combined both players' entire history 
I tried to dig as far as I could back. It's over 1,200 collective games together. Neither of them hit each other. So they've been playing That's for crazy. a few years now, and yet they've still never played, even though they both are players that are more uh, within the endemic ver uh, region of Korea. Would you say esports history is being made over oh! here? That's right, Tasteless. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I think this is extremely special, having two players that are, that are competing in Pro League not play yeah. against each other before. Yeah. So this is really special. Are. Especially because Trap is also not a small guy. Like, he's an extremely good player. I think his run through MLG Anaheim 2014, it may not have been one of the most celebrated events of all time because, you know, it was stacked, but it wasn't like ultra super hype stacked. Yeah. But it was still a really tough tournament, and Trap was so phenomenal that weekend. Right. I think the game that he played, I, I've talked about this way too many times, but the game that he played on Frost against Scarlet, that was, in my opinion, like the best game of the year in 2014. Like, I can't believe that he was able to win that. Mm -hmm. The grand finals against Bold. He looked so good. Like we all like this was really funny because the entire audience was just waiting for to cheer for Paul, the Captain America, and like he killed like one Nexus in four games, you know, and like, <laughs> he still lost that game. Like Trap was so damn good back then at Anaheim, and I think even in DC, uh, the guy showed some really cool attitude as well. He showed up and they're like, "Hey, Trap, introduce yourself to these fans because we don't see you very often." And he's like. Hey man, like I'm trapped. I won MLG, you know, I've done well here as well. I'm winning games. Like, why don't you guys remember me? I think it's time for you guys to remember me. It was really awesome. But like, man, this guy, he's got some uh, power to him. You know, way back in the day, uh, before there was ever StarCraft II, and it was only Brood War, I joined the West Clan by Clan, and they didn't want me on the team because I was some annoying foreigner. Uh, and they were like, ah, oh, sure, you can was? play a couple of guys. Yeah, true. Yeah. I guess I've kind of remained that way. <laughs> I played both Trap and Flash to beat them to qualify for the team. Wow. They were like, they were both about 12 and 11 years old at the time. <laughs> uh, but, you know, they were pretty good. And uh, I get to hold it over their head forever because that's basically some of the most meaningful StarCraft games I've ever won. <laughs> But yeah, that's my history with them. That's, that's actually really cool. It's really cool. That's really cool history uh, diving there. And in fact, let's talk a little bit about Trap's history of how he got to this point. He called, he went through the America qualifier where he beat uh, pretty good players, you know, Sky High and Rogue, two Korean players that are well yeah. known there. And of course, uh, your teammate Mana finally being able to defeat Stats 3 0. So he's had a pretty reasonable run to get to where he is. In fact, Trap's actually done so well online that uh, one of the, the most commonly used statistic sites, Alugalock, predicted him to win the entire thing just because of his online mm -hmm. performance. It's a pretty far out there prediction. I mean, yeah. he's, he's red hot and on fire, and he's beating stats is also one of the most yep. uh, big kind of red hot on fire protosses right now as well. Um, but man, this tournament, Innovation, yeah. Maru, Life, I mean, obviously we saw right. Life got his uh, run cut short a little bit here, but there's some gigantic names. I don't know that Trap is... At least in my opinion, no, do you think I don't he's think he's there? top three. I don't think he's top three. I think he's he's not a, the biggest underdog out there or the biggest no. dark horse. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I, I would say he's like sub tier to win it, like a sub favorite. Anyway, let's take a look at the maps. First map is going to be Infernal what? Pools. What? <laughs> Start Flash the series it, with Infernal Pools. He picked it. And last map is Expedition Lost. What Flash pick? Flash. Oh, okay, Flash Vito Deadwing. Right, okay. that makes sense. Big Protoss map. Yeah. I like that. And then Trap Vito Secret Spring. Double Secret Spring. Right. <laughs> Which makes sense. Dual, dual Spring. <laughs> dual, dual, dual Secret Spring. Well, I call it I double or dual. Really spring. interesting, though, guys. Like, this series starting on Inferno Pools, like a map that we really see. We've seen it a couple of times because we're playing best of fives right now. But yeah. as first map of a best of five, that's, I think, a premiere. Like, I think this is esports history being made again, Tasteless. Wow. And a literal <laughs> god. <laughs> He's already a literal <laughs> god. Painlings <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> And the last map mm. being Expedition Lost. That's a map that Terran players in general are not very happy with because it's a horrible Reaper map at first and it's like kind of easy to defend drops for Protoss. It's easy to put observers in good positions. So I kind of feel that, you know, if Flash is going to win this series, most likely 3-0 or 3-1, he doesn't want to let it go down to the wire because Game 5 and Expedition Lost, he right. can't be too happy with that. Catalina, kind of the consummate Terran map. We've seen that get picked. It's, it's not bad enough that it's the auto veto, but it's... Certainly would be the second pick, I feel like, for 99% of yep. everybody else. Uh, Overgrowth has kind of become the gauntlet map. That's the one that most people feel pretty okay with. I know a lot of Zerg feel that's slightly leaning in their favor, I guess. But mm -hmm. there is only one Zerg remaining, so I guess everybody else is pretty okay with the map. So I guess it's finally time to get the last prediction of the round of 16. And this time, I'm going to start with In Control. No! Oh, I mean, okay. Uh, I, I do think that Flash takes this home, and I think if it's map score, 
I mean, I'd like a close series. We've had a couple of those, and if yesterday was any indicator, the big marquee matchup ended up 3-2, so I'm going to say Flash, 3-2. Mm, all right, Flash. Uh, let's go with Rardam and see yeah. how he differs or maybe agrees with in control on yeah. this one. He differs. Uh, it, it is a tough one, honestly. I, I really think it's a tough one. Of course, you know, if you don't follow StarCraft all that well and then you look at it, it's Flash, you know, like, all I know is that Flash is a god, and everybody tells me that Flash is a god, but really can't underestimate Trap, but... I still feel like the hype, you know, the spirit, it's too much. You can't go against Flash over here. So I think Flash 3 won. Oh, what? You, st <gasps> you said you were going to pick Trap. I thought Yesterday. about it. I thought about it. But I look at the map. Wow. We were starting on Inferno Pools and right. Catalina's map 3. Like, I don't know. I, I can't I can bet well, it. Well, you have some I can bet it. Well, an agreement we between uh, Rotterdam and InControl. Yeah. Do you follow suit? I'm Liquid go suit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go for the uh, MLG form here and uh, Cheerful Trap. Uh, this is the first time we've differed. Yep, That's interesting. 3-1 right. uh, for Trap. All right, well, Snoot wow. throws a lobby in for the underdog, or at least in terms of the fan popularity. I mean, maybe Trap's not actually the underdog based off his recent performance. And that wraps up our pregame analysis for this last first round of matchup. We'll give it over to Todd and Kolaris, who will bring us the last match commentary. Our Intel Extreme Masters Toronto champion now faces off a man who in 2015 against Turn so far is looking on form, on point, moving through the qualification process and finding his way here to the round of 16 to greet himself with Flash in the first round. Yeah, I've talked in the, in the last series about how Trap played some amazing games against Cure, even though he lost 0-3, you know. Yeah. Um, so, really looking forward to what he can bring to the table here. He was the guy who beat Paltz so convincingly at a time when Paltz, everybody thought he was going to win the MLG. But Trap took it away from him. And now he's going to try to take the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice away from Flash. Who comes in with a lot of expectation on his head. So let's get into game number one now. Here in this best of five, the final best of five for the round of 16. As we have spawning on the top left-hand corner here of Inferno Pools. As our red Protoss, it is Trap. And up to the top right-hand corner, our blue Terran representing KT Rolster. It's Flash. I think the expert desk shared very nicely uh, a feeling that is also uh, mutual with me about how those maps are very difficult for, uh, for most protoses to deal with Terran on, in my opinion. So Trap here might have something special planned, you know, since he didn't veto this map and instead went for the Secret Spring veto. I guess it's usually between these two, you know, sometimes maybe Catalina as well. But most of the times we've seen, you know, best of five, we see Catalina more often than not in PVT. So really between Secret Spring and this, and in this case Trap, I don't know. Does he have something planned or does he think that maybe uh, he can catch Flash off guard with uh, some oracles, some tricks here and there? Trap is really... He's one of those guys who does the best with some oracles out early on and who's very good at not only harassing but also defending at the same time as opposed to somebody like Hero who just defends with everything that he has. And Flash, actually, he's been doing a lot of command center first. Four days ago, just four days ago, that's how much and that's how much these guys travel and how many tournaments and games they play. Four days ago, he was facing Creator and he used uh, that very build, command center first on Dead Wing. And then he went for proxies with the factory and the starport proxy and was very successful with it, won very easily. And I think Trap has got to come in with something planned here. He's got to look at the lineup of this world championship and say, yeah. there's a lot of really, really good Terrans here, not just my first opponent in Flash. So there has to be some uh, small snippets of preparation. But already Trap has gone for Pylon down towards the low ground. Roddy build. Little problems. Roddy build, right? Uh, well, actually, it might not be it? Tempest, so... <laughs> Okay, well... This is just fun, Oracle. Supposedly, he hasn't started it yet. The Stargate. He could have... They like that a little bit... Oh, no, actually, well, no. Okay, okay yeah. he, made it, he made that kind of late then. Yeah. Because usually you can start it a little bit earlier than now. And he's going to get Warp Gate first. Does he abort? No. Going to go for a Twilight instead. I, I do think he wanted to go for a Stargate, but upon being scouted, he says, you know what? He's going to see only one pylon. He's going to think it's a proxy Stargate, so I'm going to yeah. go for a Twilight instead. Look how smart Flash is. He's going to move out immediately and start looking around the map for that very building. 
that he knows he's hidden somewhere. Actually, sadly, he's going in the wrong direction because he yeah. was just right there in the natural. There is so much space to cover, actually, on this map. How do you find a proxy? A little difficult to find it in the natural. I mean, of all places, you don't really expect something to be hidden right there. Some, usually, it will be a pylon put there to throw your opponent off guard when they actually scout. But this time, it actually is a yeah. bit of a proxy uh, just to go straight into Blink. Very, very quick Chrono Boost into that. Slash is going to reposition this, and already Bunker started at the front with two missile turrets as well. Are we seriously going to see? Uh, that is very quick. Yeah. I mean, he <laughs> thinks he's up against his target. Yeah. He's convinced he's up against his target. This is what Trap has done so well already in this game, playing the mind games, knowing that Flash will anticipate that and going for the blink. Are we really going to see some kind of three or four gates blink stalkers, Skylaris? It's been a while. Yeah, it has. Last time I saw this was probably Manor, actually. Uh, busting this out, he loves to do that quite a bit. Of course but, it was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, here comes another ship core as well. A lot of Chrono Boost doable is going into that blink. And uh, the missile turrets, ah, okay. So he's leaving them at just one second and with the SCV next to them. So yeah. if he needs that one at the front, he can complete it. Uh, and if he doesn't need it later on, if he doesn't see an Oracle coming, he can cancel it and save some money. But the third barracks was actually quite delayed and Flash, He's, uh, you know, even when he went CC first before, like I said, he's, he's proxied. I've seen him only stay on two barracks and take very quickly, uh -oh. uh, you know, to a factory and all that. Still sees no Nexus. Yeah. Still sees no Nexus. Next bunker is going to be added on at the front here for Flash. He has a bit more of an inkling as what's going on now. He cancelled that missile tour, obviously, but he needs a lot of power behind this force because if there's no expansion, there's going to be a hell of a lot of units. Yeah, Trap is already on three stalkers. He's going to warp in three more, so he's going to be on six. And very, very quickly, it's going to be 9, it's going to be 12, 15, and at the time you have 15, those bunkers get sniped very, very yeah. quickly. Units are going to die left and right here for Flash, who might have to sack his natural. He's leaving, though, just a few units in one of the bunkers and some SCVs there. A little bit weird. Usually, you really wouldn't, shouldn't try to defend that. And actually, Trap's just going to go straight for the main here. I'm worried that the jump in is going to be real, and it is already. He jumps straight on top of some of these rings that do not have Sim at all. Sim has only just started, and that bunker only just complete. But he took down quite a lot of the marines there. Whoa. They gained the bunker completely. The Mothership Core is going to fall. He doesn't have any high ground vision at all. So Flash was able to chase that down, and now Trap is he's, he's trapped here. This isn't really the best <laughs> position for him to be in, as he's going to lose a lot of these stalkers, but he's trying to get as many SCVs as possible during this. And he's not warping in units right now. He definitely needs to do that. He needs to keep on warping in his stalkers. He remakes the mothership core. Oh my god, Flash, with, that, up. with those SCVs tanking at the front, he's defended this. And he lost 12 workers during all of that, so it's 15 workers against 24. But it's double command center with those mules as well. He gets yeah. another stalker on the way out. And but he, Flash is getting two mothers at a time now. Yeah. And again, he lost the Mothership Core, so he doesn't really have high ground vision to be able to poke forward. He's going to have to bring the Mothership Core from the back all the way to the front to continue harass at the back of his opponent's base. So for now, maybe the front is the only option for a little window. Trap has absolutely no intention of transitioning. Going to try and move forwards again here, bringing down some of these Marauders, focusing those down. He knows that those are the big damage dealer against these Stalkers, but he is trying to run away from the rest of that bio. Thankfully for him, there's nothing in that bunker. And trying to trade away once again against the Marauder. Will Blink out to save himself. You better kite for your life, Trap, here, because this has not done enough damage, I think, to Flash. Even though he's killed quite a few SCVs, there is the double mule that can be used, and he's gonna bring back with the Dark Shrine on the way now. I think he realized that there is only one turret in the main mineral line. He could do a lot of damage if he was to warp in some DTs and send them around the natural, but I don't even think that's a good idea, to be honest. He's right so now, poor. with this economy, on one base economy, is actually the only moment when a Dark Shrine is actually expensive. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> exactly. Funny to think that. He's so poor, so, oh, he's so getting poor. The turret, though. Ah, that's nice, but does that now say uh, to Flash, what are you up to? Why did you go for the turret so aggressively there? Yeah. Now that I think of it, with all the SCVs that he has killed, Flash has to use a lot of mules. That's true, that's true. Tries to go for the time warp here. The militia core is actually going to fall again, but that's the most stalkers that he has available to him. And also these, well, this bio force is getting quite low. He's focusing down all the marauders. He knows those are the big damage dealers will blink out uh, because there is a bit too much firepower there for Flash. Yeah, this was so much damage with those last uh, stalkers getting in and now one single DT is going to get uh -oh. warped in. The orbitals are at 51 and 56 energy. Flash is saving some energy. No, he just used two mules. Yeah, he's used oh two mules. Oh my god. He's and he doesn't even have the... He has the money for one turret, which he's making in the main. 
Yeah, trying to get that up. And unfortunately, I mean, he actually should be able to get that up. The DT, uh, if he can block it well enough with uh, hold command. It's going around. this bio. It's uh -oh. extra nose, too. Another, another missile turret's going down. This is do or die here for Flash. Unfortunately, if he's not able to really clean this up, but he gets the good surround of the positioning of his bio to stop that DT from getting on top of it. Yeah, trap pulled back on time here before losing that DT. Should go for the tech lab here, possibly with that one and there's so uh, much bio there's so much yeah. bio it, as long as he gets vision uh, and saves up a little bit more energy for the scan on this dt who is not going to move into range trappers fallen back he's going to try and get himself a nexus but he still has some power at that natural forcing away the command center this is crazy flash is down to 10 scvs against 27 probes now he's got a turret to detect those dts but i mean oh actually trap uh, messing up here a little bit pulling back on time but now the scan is going to be used the scan, oh, so oh, the DT the middle line. Line low. He's going into the mineral line with that. If you could do some good blink micro, so many of those Marines are very, very low, very close to dying off. The Dark Templar will end up falling to some of the bio, but he's got he's not got many workers left. All his 8 yeah. to 26. That's that's really way too little. And now Trap is just gonna end it. There you go, GG. Game number one goes to Trap to start things off here in the best of five after a very, very strong one base play that didn't really catch Flash off guard, but the execution from Trap was good enough to be able to push through. You do not try and save your natural against the Skylights. You, you just fly your command center into the main, you get bonkers there, and you just defend. There is no way Protoss can move up the ramp and really do anything. You take two medivacs, and once you have medivacs, this becomes another game. You retake your expand, you start being aggressive. Usually Protoss is going to be very far behind on tech. They're only going to be on Blink Stalkers. Huge mess up in the first game here by Flash, I think. Well, uh, your um, your question has basically been answered. Did he come in with a game plan? But looks things in game one. Yes, yes, he did there on Inferno Pools. We're going to go to a short break, and then when we're back, it's game number two of Flash versus Trap.
welcome back to the Intel Extreme Championship here as we get into game number two between Flash and Trap. And for a lot of fans out there, a little bit of a disappointing start there for Flash as Trap has been able to wrangle away with game number one, but very, very successfully against Flash, who was broken down piece by piece there uh, in that first match. I guess uh, Trap found a way to play on, uh, on that map, on Inferno Pulse, man, with uh, <laughs> that nice little all-in into another all-in, into another wave. I'm sure he would have had another wave. Actually, no, he was getting a Nexus. And Flash, I actually wonder if he had not used the mules and have scans available instead, if he would have been able to do a lot better. Obviously, he would have been able to do better, but would he have been able to stabilize and win? I guess we'll never know. Well, let's get into game number two then. Flash and Trap. Facing off here in this best of five, as we have spawning up to the north, it's our red Protoss, representing Jinna Green Wings. It is Trap. <laughs> and out to the south, our blue Terran, representing KT Rolster. It is Flash. <laughs> This is Trap's map pick, so I definitely expect something a little bit more standard here out of him. Same from Flash. I the last, expect the Flash last to time, go. hmm, I can't quite recall. It's uh, it's a difficult thing for Flash to go up against Trap because Trap. I, I have to agree with what the Death said. I think that Trap is very very underestimated. Very, very underestimated in the way that he can play out again. I mean, in 2015 at the moment against Terran, he is playing spectacularly. Uh, he has only dropped really a few maps, one of which was to hack in Pro League very recently. I think it was like a couple of days ago. Uh, but other than that, he's been he's been storming ahead against Terran. Yeah. Reaper opener here for Flash, Gaston 12. Trap has actually always been very impressive, I think, versus Terran, but he doesn't play that many tournaments. Like, he, we, also, we mostly, like, you know, see him in Pro League and stuff. Yeah. But uh, he's always been one of those protoses that you definitely should check out if you're, if you're a protos player and you you know you want to get inspiration just in general. Always been really high up there. So in this game, so far everything looks normal. We're not gonna have any quick scouts from anybody. It's just gonna be a reaper opener against what I think will be just a standard nexus, you know, as you would go uh, most of the time in protos or Stern after one gas and one gateway. Well, last time I got the opportunity to cast Flash in tournament play in a LAN setting, he did win the Intel Extreme Master Toronto. So if you can bring out that form again, for a lot of people that will make them happy. But at the moment, Trap is looking to cause arguably the upset here, who goes for his second guess off the back of all of this. But yeah. the SCV is moving out pretty early to spot things that are going on. Yeah, actually, Flash winning Toronto, it wasn't even like you know, he got like an easy route or like only his best matchup. Like he played against a lot of strong players yep. from every race and he beat Zest in finals. Yep. Zest was playing really, really well back then. So that makes it even more impressive to me. Trap, even though he just got scouted, he says, you know what? I'm just going to do 3-3 three, three on the gases. I don't even care. I'm going to put fear in your eye. He's going to start a, a mothership core here before the Nexus to be able to defend against uh, that Reaper, which I guess maybe he suspects might be on the way, but actually, Flash saw one pro move out, so stays a little bit back at home with this to try and intercept that, and he should be able to. Yeah, Trap was trying to play tricky with this probe as well, negate the path of the Reaper that was moving out, but as you said, staying home, making sure that's not going to oh, get too he much lost, information. He lost uh, the SCV at the same time across the map, though. Ah, okay. It was trapped. <laughs> uh, this is a pun you can't avoid. Yeah, Every I know. time something happens like that, like, what other word than Trap could you use? Yeah. He's it was stuck <laughs> in the main. <laughs> poor, little, poor little guy. Well, it's going to be Nexus into Stargate. Um, we have double command center actually being added on for Flash here behind this. So playing a very, very greedy opener himself. The Reaper is going to be the tool to not only get the information, but also keep some of these units back at home, yeah. defending away from the Reaper. Flash is not only getting a very quick third command center. I think he might even want to go for a quick factory behind this. He's, no, okay, no. It's going to be a quick eBay. Oh my god, this is so greedy. This is the greediest that you can be. One barracks with, with a reactor, uh -huh. pumping out two marines at a time. Well, he saw the Stargate as well. So yeah, which he had, really he had made helps. it before, though. He had made he had made the eBay before he saw it, I think. Hmm. Well, so he's going to be able to get plus one and get turrets at the same time. And I guess since there is a Stargate, it's very unlikely there will be gateways to be able to attack on the ground with it. Maybe he anticipated it from the gas coming in. I, yeah. I mean, especially considering that he was kind of anticipating it in the previous yeah. game, but Trap uh, threw him for a loop in that previous one, so 
if you see if you see double gas, it's either Blink or DTs or Stargate against yeah. two of those things, and eBay is great. So took a bit of a of a risk here, maybe. You know, if you if it had in Blink here, he might have just have had an auto loss with the quick third command center. And the Oracle is on the way across the map. Second one is being queued up, and it will head over there as well. As Trap has another probe out lying in this position and goes down, sees the third command center uh, from this point on. So should be happy in that position. How is he going to react, though? Does he start and play really greedy? Drops down one single forge. Maybe a double forge if he goes for a second one. That could be cool. It would uh, try and exploit the fact that we're not going to have too many units for Flash able to move out anytime soon. But for now, it just looks like the one forge at the moment. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he went into something like a Robo, Colossus, and a very quick third. You know, Doesn't have to take that hard. Just have to take consistently, not take it too slow. Yeah, yeah. And at the same time, build up his own economy really, really well. Long. And actually... Yeah, another one is he's, he's on the way. How many oracles is he going to stop at? That's a lot of oracles. He's actually going straight against the Marines there for a second. Saves the first oracle, uh, but the third one being on the way does cause some issues because three oracles can actually chew through a lot of Marines very, very fast. Yeah, really nice scout here by Flash who anticipated that. He knew that Trap had scouted the quick third command center in. A lot of the time, the reaction from the Protoss is going to be their own quicker third. So he confirms that. And right now, Flash, he knows exactly where he's at. He knows exactly what timing he's going to be able to start hitting with the medivacs. But first, he needs to pay a lot of attention to these oracles because they are being controlled very, very well. Yeah, he already lost uh, about seven of his Marines as well as two workers during all of that little bit of harassment, uh, which takes power away from Flash to even do a move out once again. So the third command send, uh, third next yeah. behind this is very safe uh, and he shouldn't be worried too Ooh. much at all. Still no Robo, and the Twilight went down. I'm starting to think that his Trap might want to go straight into, you know, Charge Lord Templar, or maybe Blink. But I feel like Charge Lord Templar might be a very good thing that he could do, because he's keeping Flash confined back at home. He's done economic damage. At this point, he's on 49 probes against 40 SCVs. He's going to have an earlier third saturated on the spot. So if you went for something, yeah, look, he's getting Phoenix now. Yeah. This is going to be, I guess, a classic style build where you get Phoenixes to shut down the medivac drops, especially on that map with the natural being so open. And you get charged out te high Templars with Storm. It, it counteracts, yeah, because uh, what we see on this map is three bases of Protoss, hit left, hit right, or even when it gets to a four base situation, hit the left and hit the right even more because they're so spread out. But Phoenix is such a good tool to shut that down. The mobility is high. Yes. Medivacs aren't going to want to do anything against well, it. Well, sometimes it is, at least. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> sometimes. We've seen it uh, fail at times as well, but the more ahead you are, the stronger I feel like this Phoenix build is. Yeah. Just because the Terran is not, really not going to have that much, he's going to have to commit a lot to these drops, and then you just shut them down, sometimes kill a lot of stuff, not losing a lot yourself with just charge lots and Phoenixes. And also, it's, in this situation, I really feel like Flash right now is playing without any information at all. Like, he has no idea what the transition is going to be from these three Oracles. He probably thinks he's Colossus. He has no idea. Yeah, I don't think he's dropped a scan to see anything. Yeah, he, he can't really even spare one. No, you're right. He's... Uh... He's just continuing on and trying to deal with all this pressure that's hitting him at the moment, getting those mules out because he lost around 10 workers, thus trap at the moment. His economy has been completely unhindered whilst even the few more oracles just trying to bounce on in and see if they can do more damage. And they keep getting SCVs here and there. Yeah, in the same spot too, just get a turret. Flash, don't be so stubborn. Well, he loses a few more. Templar Archives going down behind this with Zealot Charge about to finish up. This composition for him is going to be very, very strong. Uh, I really like that Flash started his upgrades quickly, by the way. It's like one of the things that uh, he has going for him. Like he made he made the armory in the second eBay, like not without waiting any time. So he's already started plus two infantry weapons. And from there, he's, I don't know if he, yeah, surely he should start moving out, doing some drops here and there. He's going to be able to realize what he's up against. And then from there, he can react. Trap, though, he, he hasn't made Storm. And he's getting a Robo now. Mm. Why hasn't he started Storm? He's getting an Archon. I guess he's, he must have seen Flash move out, and he's being fearful. very, very scared. Yeah, he's got to be careful. He's created a really nice wall with those Phoenix to end up in, uh, anticipating any move that Man, would come in. The Oracles are still on the way to do even more damage and as one shields go. He's got 17 worker kills with the Oracles. They've done a lot of work, those three. 
It was all in that area, okay, Lars. <laughs> yeah, it was all in that one location for the most part. That's, that's pretty brutal. Really cool pylon by Trap, by the way. Just below his main to be able to spot those uh, medivacs potentially flying in earlier. He's keeping the Phoenixes on the right-hand side well spread out as well. He's got a probe there to be able to spot on that gold base on the right-hand side. Very nice play from both yeah. players so far. Double Robo Colossus. Instead of getting High Templar with Storms, he just gets Archons. And now he's going to go straight into double Robo Colossus because he realized that Flash is going to scout no Colossus and Archons and he's going to skip entirely on Vikings. In which case, you can crush a Tyrant who's not ready against Colossus. And he won't spot these Medivacs on the left-hand side just yet. Scan goes down, he sees the Zealot Archon composition at the front uh, but hasn't spotted any yeah. Phoenix at his, all. He has his whole army very close. Yeah, so he should be able to shut that down with that but he's also sending a small contingent through the middle of the map, which does get spotted by the Oracle oh there, my but God. look how far he's going with those four Medivacs up to the top left, and the Oracles are still getting damaged. Let's get a turret flash in this spot, please. <laughs> it's driving you nuts, man, I can see this it. has gone far enough. <laughs> well, the oh, Medivacs still being so sneaky up to the top. That big drop is very, very scary, actually. Yeah, that's just, that's not an angle you expect to come in from here, but the four Medivacs are going to drop everything on. What's the point in having all these Phoenix if they're not in the right place at the right time? The they're Phoenixes? Gonna, they're going to try and uh, deal with the Medivacs, and yes, they will pick up a few of these units as well, but he needs most of his army there, and the Nexus will end up falling to Flash to start things off on the left-hand side as well. A chunk of his army trying to push on forwards, but he does run up against a big wall of Zealots, and he's going to have to march on out, but he's still doing big damage in the main. Yeah, this is going to do even more. He's going to get the Forge, potentially the uh -oh. Templar Archives, and at the same time, the units that were picked up in the Minifact could go for the Natural, or even the third base. Oh, brilliant pick-offs here. Even the Templar Archives going to end up falling. So much of his tech goes absolutely down the drain. Starts more Phoenix to produce and keep this all the way back but he's going for another drop on the third base whilst all the armies moved away he's going for more of the economy he's gonna get a lot of probes here as well flash has definitely even it up in terms of the score he's getting a lot of widow miners as well which is really gonna help against this very heavy charge lot composition these attacks are gonna get shut down eventually but at what cost guy lies trap has lost so much he's down to 52 probes against 65 SCVs, and he's only got two Nexus. He's not even remaking a third one right now in uh, his main. And the army supply is in favor of Flash still. Look at the army now marching forwards in the middle of the map. If he doesn't have good splash damage to deal with something like that, and it's able to hit with 3-3 eventually, whilst the upgrades have been diminished here for Trap, it's going to get very scary. He's still on zero weapons upgrade here as Trap, so his units aren't hitting hard yeah. at all. I think it might be YOLO time, Kailaris. He's moving out across the map. Trap's really thinking about it right now. He's still remakes the Nexus in the main, so I guess he's, he's not sure whether he wants to attack or not. He sees the pylon next to all of this army with the scan. He's like, well, I guess I just got to back off for now as you get trap shoes. What? You can't really start engaging when you are that well read. Yes. And you can even see your opponent's army movement. You can see it with the uh, revelation that's been used by the oracles. Flash is so milder heavy and it's doing wonders for him. It's really doing well. Yeah, able to bring down the building so fast in all of those engagements. Of course, it's, his opponent's army is very zealot heavy, but it's it's still not working out too well. It's up to the splash. It's up to the Archons and the Colossi to really try and rip this down. But here's another big drop. A few cannons aren't going to be able to slow that down at all as Flash pulls this location, trying to deal with this. More zealots actually try and warp in to hold on against this. The recall is there. He might be able to push this back in the end, but the trades are good for Flash. Very good. He brings down more Colossi in all of this. Hitting this left-hand side base as well, as the Colossi are trying to hold on and might be able to over there, but he's on the splice huge. GG, game number two, goes to Flash and ties up the series. Very convincing win here out of Flash. He exploited his supply lead very nicely in the end. If he attacks with just one single big chunk of army against what Trap has, Trap might actually hold. He just dropped everywhere. And in the end, that big Doom drop going all the way around on the left-hand side and dropping into the main really what, I guess, sealed the deal here for him. He was just so far ahead after this. Yeah, that was that was a well-played-out game. And as I said, I said it mid-cast, what's the point in having the Phoenix if they're not there at the right point at the right time? Flash, anticipating preparedness on the other side there by Trap, takes a huge swing around the left-hand side and engages from an angle that you very, very rarely see. You very rarely see on that map, but Flash had the patience to do it. He did a fairly risky build. We pointed this out too, but uh, this was definitely, you know, in terms of build order, even though he took losses with Marines and SCVs here and there, I mean, opening three CCs and an eBay to get the plus one, getting turrets against the Oracle, 
definitely a good start to get in uh, in a game like this. All right, well, that means it is 1-1 now here in this best of five. Join us after the break when we'll go on to game number three between Flash and Trap. With 1-1 being the score here in the final round of 16 series in this best of five, I wouldn't have it any other way to conclude the day two here at the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship. We had a fantastic final series in day one, and what better way to round up day two than Flash and Trap going all the way. Catalina's going to be our third map here in this best of five, as Flash looked on point that game, on point. Now Trap's going to have to fend him off here. On Catalina. It's his map pick too. Yes. Flash map pick. It's time for the series to normalize and for Flash to win this map, Kailaris, because so far <laughs> it's been the other way around. All right, well, let's get into things. Up to the top as our red Protoss representing Jin Air Green Wings. It is Trap. And down to the bottom right hand corner, it's our blue Terran, who you're all pretty familiar with, representing KT Rolster. It is Flash. On this map, I feel like Flash, if he just has to play really solid, you know, do uh, what a Terran needs to do, some drops here and there, just some solid play, don't take any damage, don't get cheesed out of the game. And he, sh he would have a very good chance of beating Trap. You know, in Toronto, I really feel like Flash was just outplaying his opponent, playing to his best, um, to the best of his ability, to his best potential, and just doing really well like that. So I, I don't feel like he has to take too many gambles, uh, or at least not particularly play the way he's been uh, playing, at least in the last game, you know, where he took definitely a few risks here and there. Command setter first, by the look of things, is going to be his choice on this map, and Flash does a lot of command center first, which is punishable on two players map if you can anticipate it and you go for a proxy 
Catalina is not one of those maps. Hilarious. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's a little bit hard to really get anything crazy going off at the very beginning unless it's going to be something like a proxy Stargate in a, a location yeah. that is a little less uh, available to scout. Actually, a gate 10, you know, Zealot, Stalker, Mothership Core Rush could do a lot, but it's very, very risky. If you do that and Flash is playing standard and Flash is mixing it up a lot, then you're in a lot of trouble. Oh, well, for now, it's just going to be Command Center first here for Flash who looks to scout out his opponent, goes in the wrong direction first and will head up to the top right to spot him out. And uh, obviously, Flash from even the previous two games really wants a lot of information on Trap. There's been two significantly different builds here from Trap coming out, uh, uh, especially the first one being all the more threatening to start things off, hence why it was victorious. Uh, so he does, he does want to know what's going on pretty early against Trap. Flash has a tendency actually to skip on the third racks, I think. Like, he doesn't always get it. Mm. I've seen him, you know, get double gas behind his two raxes and then tech a little bit earlier. So if Trap's aware of that, there's a few ways he could exploit that, you know, either with aggression or with being greedy himself pretty well because there's no, you know, massive amount of bio that could attack him. And look, Flash is banking up quite a bit of money to get his two orbitals. So I guess we're not going to have a third rax made just yet. Let's see. Yeah, it gives him a little bit more defensive presence with those two barracks that we're seeing here compared to uh, anything else that he would have done in terms of like going up to the factory pretty quickly. Of course, he didn't have any gases right. there or anything He's like that. He's actually going for it. Okay, so. Ah, okay. I'm going to go for one more. I'm going to fly the other one over there. Actually, he's going to block another. Oh, he's, okay, he's going to fly all of them. He wants to make his base pretty. Make sure everything lines up so he can get all that macro going as quickly as possible. But that probe is very, very close to the base here. Yeah. The trap. Uh, he really wants to sneak in, but against those Marines at the front, it's very difficult. He would love to get some information, but Flash is very prone to deny that. He's waiting until the timing uh, for Reaper expires, and then he's going to get in there. Just in case, you know, yeah. there is a Reaper, you're going to want to try and avoid that. Remember, it didn't happen uh, on Vani. He got caught and killed, and actually chooses to just go back instead. In base Stargate again. In base Stargate for Trap. Uh, as even if he went for oracles in this game and there were still missile turrets set up, I wouldn't blame Trap in the slightest yeah. because of how much work they actually did during game number two. Trap actually, uh, back when he played against Cure in Battlegrounds Washington, this was the one map he had an epic game on with oracles that went to, I think, as high as 25 kills for like one oracle. So they had a lot of kills, they were always moving around. He kept them alive for a very long time and they gave him a lot of map control. <laughs> you know what's funny? He didn't actually realize that Flash was spawned down to the bottom right with that probe. He actually went over to check the left-hand side, yeah. never went in there, and that probe was just chilling out near the base for a little while, so... I thought that or he was looking for hidden bases, but yeah, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but regardless of that fact, here comes the Oracle now in production, uh, looking to try and nip in there. And unfortunately for Flash, he really doesn't have too much information uh, regarding much of this. I think, what did he really spot when he went in there? Only one gas guy is worth yeah. mining. He may have seen the probes uh, heading over to the other side. I think he probably did, but... Oh, Quick well. robo behind this. So in this game, I, I do think that Trap's going to be playing it a lot more standard, you know? Not going to be going for uh -huh. any kind of charge lot Templar, most likely going to want to go for Colossus. And then a third base, which I actually wonder whether he will take that below his main base or on the right-hand side. I feel like the right-hand side might be a better choice, but then you're very exposed against, you know, big Doom drops that could come from the left-hand side of your main. The queue-in of movement from the Oracle there to negate Flash from being able to see it early on yeah. was really impressive there by Trap. He didn't know about that Supply Depot wall up to the north of this base, but he comes in from an angle that he anticipates no units being. So he killed off a few workers there, uh, doing all right, and com goes completely undamaged through that. Trap is a pretty sick pilot, man. Yeah. We thought Classic was the best, but Trap definitely taking over here with uh, his Oracle control so far. And it's double forge behind it. He's saying that oh, I think my oracles are gonna, my oracles gonna do all right, and keeping yeah. you on the off side of the map for now. Uh, and obviously those forges come at you know the cost for him, as the missile turrets came at the cost here for uh, Flash, who had to commit to that for the defense. Yeah, Flash there is actually gonna be, uh, I feel a bit of a timing where he could do quite a bit of damage with his first few medivacs, or he might just wait, you know, until he has like say up to four and stuff to try and drop here and there. This is a very good map for drops. A lot of dead space, you know, around the main base, around the natural that you can come in from. And it's, I mean, unless you're going to make 12 observers, you're not going to be able to see uh, medivacs come in from every possible location on the map. That's right, and that's why we're seeing outlying pylons also go down for trap in a similar vein to how those supply depots have gone down for Whoa. Flash. Flash was supply blocked here. 
Yeah. And he's moving out with a lot of his units around a, an interesting angle to try and negate the vision. Uh, but the observer does see that movement out. So Trap should be able to prepare if he has a few sentries or the photon overcharge. It'll keep him in uh, fine step back at home. Yeah, Blink is going to start here and Trap should be looking, trying to chrono boost that Colossus as much as possible because he needs to comfortably hold early on if he wants to be able to stabilize. You know, the double forge, it's considered as pretty great nowadays. Once upon a time, it was one of the strongest builds, but now when you go for it, oh, actually, he has no sentries. Usually you would have one or two sentries here to force for that ramp, but the Colossus is out now. Yeah, he popped just in the nick of time. And at the same time, this Medivac was, was always going to have a hard time to get over to that left-hand side to actually drop these Widow Mines without being spotted because there was a lot of vision on that left-hand side for Trap. Flash with racks four and five going down, gonna get chased out of that main, but uses oh! that opportunity to go into the natural. He tried to go for the Colossus, tried to jump on top of it, but there's two sentries there with the force fields help out so, so much. Oh my god, that reaction was sick. Try to, uh, Fl Flash, he tried to do the same thing as he did on Vani, by the way. He used a decoy. This time it was with a medivac in the main to try and attack in another location at the same time. On Vani, as he was sending those medivacs into the main of Trap, he moved in around the third base with his main army at the same time to bet that army of Trap out of position. It worked perfectly for him. And he's going to try and go in again. There is a cannon there, though, so even if the Widow Mines do plant themselves, uh, they will have a difficult time ahead of them because the vision is still there on two of these. Get cleaned up. Easy peasy pickings for Trap. Uh, those SCVs on the third base of Flash asking to die here. The Guardian is here, and he's angry. How many workers has he got so far? Nine uh, on the other side of this, or maybe eight, actually, with one Marine mixed in there for that Oracle. Another day at the office. In terms of units lost, actually, Trap has lost only two units so far this game, and 23 have been lost for Flash. Doing really well with that. That's what I call cost-effective, Skylars. And gets even a few more, a few more down there uh, as well, as extra medevacs are going to head and propel themselves forwards up to a more offensive point for Flash, as he's keeping very, very active on the map. Was this series? <laughs> they Every just want to die. <laughs> oh, it's like it's a meat grinder. The came, are you, did you come here on your own? I don't think so. <laughs> it's gonna happen on my watch. No, he sends two more. Oh, is he really? Flash, come on. Oh no, are they just gonna die again? There's, there's, n trap. Of course trap. they are. Trap, just. But at the same time, though, <laughs> and maybe Flash knows that Trap's gonna be no. looking at this, so he, he might gear up for a massive drop oh. in the main. He has six medivacs there with a lot of units, and he's mixing in Widow Mines very nicely. Yeah. I really like that Flash is doing that. He's so strong against Protoss. Well, that missile turret finishes, so that does cause the Oracle a few problems over on the left-hand side, but here comes the big, big Dune drop on this left-hand side. He's going to try and go around as far as possible. That Observer, the timing of yeah. the Observer, because it's on patrol, it might miss it. The Oracle does fall. But those medevacs up to the top left, that is a very, very threatening yeah. force. This is actually, like, if this entire army drops down before it starts getting attacked, it's going to be so scary. But uh, Flash, he does not want to drop his entire army in the main base without being in position elsewhere at the same time to do an attack. So he's going to wait until he gets a few more units on the right-hand side, and I think he's going to want to do a two-pronged attack while he's still taking his own turret at the same time. But two two completes before that. Uh, he saw that mo army movement out with that Marine at the front that just died off, and the Observer... There is four cannons awesome. in the main, by the way. Four cannons! Oh, I think he's barely caught the tail end of those medevacs actually flying in, but he actually catches them off guard. And But he's going to go for the drop anyway. Straight on top of a lot of these stalkers. There is a Colossus there. The Zealots are just on hold position, not really helping out at all. Uh, and that Bio will be able to do quite a bit of damage, but oh, a full ring, And that Bio is going to have to get out of there. Donald Vinivac is going to drop in the natural at the same time, and those cannons are not going to do anything uh, against this. It's drawn a lot of that army away, tries to go for the warping double. Wid Widow Mine's going to burrow down and do quite a bit of damage. Actually, one of the medevacs actually dies during wow. that. Wow. A little bit sloppy here, but Flash, he killed seven probes with this. And he's got a Proto stuck on two bases. Trap is actually getting Plasma Shields level one for some reason. Mm. Not sure why here. Just Trap is going to go for the kill. Oh, Kailas. trying to get on top of this Colossus. It's so close to death, but the warp in to stop the forward push from some of those Marauders saves that Colossus. He's going for it. He's going for the kill. He's pulling the hero move. He thinks he has killed enough to go across the map and end the game right away against Flash. Right now in Army Supply, we have 78 for Trap, 891 for Flash. Uh, we might be forced to fight in a battle. There is no sentry, by he's the way. Oh, no, the SCVs off here as well to try and combat this army as quickly as he possibly can. It's shut down some of it before any more reinforcements come along. Trying to kite the Zealots back. 
here at the front, and he actually gets one of the Colossus with the Vikings as well before losing them all. Trump is missing a lot of his army. Some of it was warped in behind. They didn't join the, I guess, the party here. Chase Some it of down. it is in the main still, idle. This, this is all over the place. This Colossus are having to retreat out. He's actually getting a lot of the Vikings before he can even engage fully with the Colossi onto there, but yeah. army supply is 85 to 62. There's still a lot of bio here available to Flash. Flash lost 19 SCVs, which is a lot, but he's still on 33 and has the three per orbital against just 46 probes and the two base protos. Maybe he waits for his upgrades to finish here. He got the shields, yeah, uh, he should. weapons, uh, the shields upgrade. Now the plus three is going to come in as well for the armor. So the Marines are going to be doing a whole lot of damage when this fight occurs. But Trap now, playing, taking the third base, biding his time. Flash is on double star port, Kailaris. If he waits for enough Vikings to deal with this Colossi with the massive army that he has on the ground, he, surely he can just move across the map and kill his opponent. He might actually just win a fight right there and there. If Flash, or if Trap, I guess, attacks too early into him. Tries to find an angle with a few Zealots, doing some harassment, denying some mining time. Immortals have started in production as well. He knows that that Viking count is going to be climbing up pretty rapidly here from Flash. Uh, and doesn't want to be committing to, uh, too much to Glossi, but at the same time, there's only two Vikings on the way at any time here, so... Flash actually even got uh, the ship weapons level one. He's going to go for it, I think, here real soon. He's moving across the map. Not going to choose to pull SCVs. Well, I guess he doesn't have that many SCVs, but... Still doesn't want to completely all in just yet. Maybe he's going to wait a little bit more and pull them. He made the armory, which is weird. Like, if you, if you wanted to pull SCVs, you, you, don't, you need to skip on that. He hasn't used it to start any extra upgrades yet, so I do think that he's going to want to go for an attack and that he should pull SCVs. Yeah. I mean, he lost a lot of SCVs after yeah. trying to deal with that, right? So his economy is hurting, and Trap is doing a really good job of denying his opponent's army moving across whilst he's just slowly building up back at home. So if, oh, they're still not mining. This is a lot go. of lost mining time, and he's just going to pull it and try and go for the kill here against Trap. If Trap had gone for Storm, I actually think he would have had time to complete that, but he didn't. He went for Archons instead, and I don't know that those Archons are going to be enough to tank at the front of his uh, army for these three Colossi to clean up. They are even injured. Like, they got full shields, but it's these three Colossi, they're not in the best shape of their life. If army it, Supply, Kyla, is 90 for Trap, 126 for Flash, here we go. Find some time with some of those force fields as well. If the Archons get some good volleys off on the Vikings, but he actually lands a lot of them. I don't think he realizes fully that there's still three Colossi at the back there that could enter the battlefield and do some damage as well. He needs to pick the Vikings up, get those into the air, get on top of those Colossi. There's not that much anti-air left here for Trap, who is holding on against this for small amounts of time here, but Flash still trying to power on with this army. The force, though, here for Trap is slowly pushing towards this there's really not that much left over here for Flash. He's had to land the Vikings again in support for this bio. Blinks to the left-hand side, trying to get a better angle on this army. The two Immortals are doing a lot of work here against a mostly Marauder composition with extra Zealots warping in. Trap is buying himself those last seconds that he needs to hold on against a very, very broke Flash. And this was a massive all-in from Flash. He's down to 10 SCVs. I think Trap may be able to barely hold and win the game here. Pushing back. He's Trap pushing being back. able to warp in units. There you go, GG. Trap takes game number three a very very close call on that hold there and keeping those colossi at the back might have bought him that little bit of time he needed because if the vikings would have just flown in and instantly killed those off it would have given flash a little bit more leeway to push on further with the big chunk of his army i think flash just going straight for the attack like this into sentries into well positioned units he allowed Trap to make most of the situation. Those force fields were great, they were straight line, the Colossus weren't getting hit by anything, yeah. and then Vikings had to fly into Stalkers and Photon of a Charge, they got sniped very quickly. And then those two Immortals, you know, they cleaned up. All right, we are gonna once again go to a short break, and then when we're back, it's match point for this man on screen. Trap here at the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship.
It's the final hurdle for Trap here in the round of 16, whereas on the other side of these booths, it's the last straw for Flash, who somehow, some way, has to pull out this game and then another one here against Trap, who's looking on form at the moment. That hold was good, <laughs> considering the situation uh, that had come up. Uh, and now Trap, one match away from the round of eight. Uh, the other thing, this was going to go that way, you know, that last attack, Flash maybe a little bit committing too early and in a bad position. He could have come in from any sides, he could have dropped at the same time, chose to just pull the CVs and go for it. And in the end, the hold was good enough. Overgrowth now, though, which uh, was Trap's second map pick. All right, well, let's get into it. Game number four now here. The Intel Extreme Masters World Championship, the final round of 16 best of five. As we have spawning down to the bottom left-hand corner, it's our red Protoss representing Jin Air Green Wings. It is Trap. And up to the top right-hand corner. He needs to win this one or he will be eliminated from the World Championship. Representing KT Rolster, it is Flash. The fans still believe the Polish crowd here still holding their, uh, their banner, their Flash banner, very high and proud. Would you call them a Flash mob? Oh. <laughs> Please, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Worst ever. Worst ever. Uh, honestly, Flash has not been playing that well, in my opinion. Like, um, the one game that he won, you know, was like a massive build order lead that field that he got. Surely, like, he worked hard for to get it. But in the two other games, maybe a little bit underwhelming from uh, what I would expect from Flash, personally. Like, in Toronto, it feels like it was a different player. Like, in Toronto, there was just no stopping, stopping him. I mean, as of late, uh, aside from life still calling him the best Terran in the world, he's had a rocky road as of, uh, as of recent. His results haven't exactly been where you expect someone like Flash to attain. Uh, he still has a chance here, though, in this series. Yeah. He already took a uh, strong game number two there off Trap. Uh, and this map can go in a similar fashion, unless we see Trap lock down uh, and stop all those crazy kind of drops on the left and right actually hitting him hard uh, yeah. in the later stages, or if he just kills Flash quickly in this game. This is actually, are we, are we actually going to see a proxy Stargate against the CC first? In which case, if Flash scouts again early on, uh, like he is doing now, mm -hmm. yeah. He's gonna see. He's gonna realize what's up. So unless Trap does the same thing as he did in the in the first game with you know the blink against the turrets, I really like Flash's position. That quick scout is gonna do wonders for him as long as you know he goes that extra mile to make sure he scouts exactly what Trap's up to, confirms that whether you know it's a Stargate or a Twilight, and then prepares accordingly. Well, sees one pylon. Hasn't seen the second one just yet here in the main base. And how is Flash gonna react? Because now the starport is breathing right down his neck. Two barracks are going to follow this up. Again, he needs that extra yeah. little bit of production here after that CC first. You know, I feel like Flash, he's been vocal in the past about how he feels about Protoss and how annoyed he is that it's really, really difficult to scout exactly what the Protoss is up to, you know, he, if the Protoss player is smart and hides his stuff yeah. on the map. And I feel like he shouldn't have done that because Protoss is like trapped. They know that. They know that, you know, Flash is already maybe even a little bit annoyed that he's uncomfortable playing against this because you need to kind of prepare blindly. And yeah, they play accordingly. He hides tech on the map, tech that probably is not going to be scouted. And he trap here, he's playing the mind game of saying, in the, in the first game, I went for a proxy on the map. You thought he was going to be Oracle. It wasn't. Maybe this time you're going to think it's Blink, but it's going to be Oracle. Yeah, uh, this, this could go a bad way here for Flash. He's already scouted out the entire right-hand side of this map, but still hasn't found exactly yeah. what is going on, as that SCV is slowly moving on this left-hand side here, and it's got to be curious as to what is going on, especially after seeing the probe on the map and having scouted forward a little bit later. He's going to have turrets ready everywhere this time, though. This oh, is great here for Flash. Stalker's walking past. Stalker's walking past, and he could actually do a lot of damage to the Marine numbers, but that being said, he's taking a lot of free damage here. Whoa. He's getting to the safety of the Oracle. Oof. Bodyguard. Yeah, and the Oracle can't go too far forwards because there is that uh, that missile turret there. As now the Stalker can recharge a few oh of my these God. shields. Trap is going for the has build against Aaron. Uh -oh. He made a second Oracle. That was a pretty obvious choice with his cheese, but now he's getting a Void Ray. I'm pretty sure he's going to be dropping down Whoa. gateways here real soon. Can't and he's going to go just for full on all-in. Can't be losing that Stalker. 
Can't be losing that Stalker. The Void Ray oh. follow-up is going to be quite hitting quite hard. Flash is staying gasless. He's getting five barracks. Oh, wow. He's just going to get massed Marines, which could do great against this. Wait a and minute. It, oh, he was going to go for a follow-up scout, but he only confirmed whether or not there was a second Nexus, which there wasn't. Flash needs to see those gateways in the main off trap, and he would be in a great position in this game if he just did that. I th I th he has to realize that this one base is continuing on. I mean, this five base player here is almost now miraculous uh, to actually counteract this. The Stalker does fall, which means he can't really harass that too easily on that angle. And the Oracles are looking for a little yeah. bit of a poking room, and they will find a few SCVs I there. think Flash's SCV is headed for the main off trap here momentarily. He's going to be able to see that there is still no Nexus. Yeah, yeah. There could be one at the gold base, but there isn't. And seeing those gateways is going to be a massive tale of what could be coming. I think he might need, you know, one more turret at the front against uh, those Void Rays. He definitely will help. But Three Void Rays deserve a lot of respect, Skylar. Yeah, but he's got four or five Marines on the way at any time. That is so much firepower behind this force that those Void Rays can't really yes. engage this too easily at all. They have to be so, so careful. It is a lot of firepower, but... Those Void Rays, man, you should never underestimate them. They, they can do a lot of damage themselves. Respect the five barracks, man. That's what I'm going with, because Flash at the moment, he is going to have so, so many Marines. I, did he ever spot the barracks at the back? I, yes, he did. Okay, so he knows he's playing against a five barracks play here yeah. uh, and is, in turn, respecting the angles and positioning that he can go for with these very, very squishy units if they get in trouble. Trap is actually not even on 16 uh, probes oh. on the minerals in the main. He's only on 15. Uh, it's going to bring down that missile turret very quickly. Look for a good angle to cut off reinforcements, arguably, on this position. Wow, Flash, really nicely done. But at the same time, he's starting to take some damage in the main. Needs to run back there. But those Void Rays, they should be able to get away. Actually, Trap was thinking maybe about engaging with the Oracles. Oh. He's going to do just that. Void Rays are going to end up dying off here. That's a lot of Marines that are going to bring those down very heavily. Two end up falling already as Flash pushes this back for now. And Trap has no transition here from there. He's just going to keep on whopping in units. Right now, he's made a few more Stalkers. Ah. He's trying to reproxy another pylon. Hey, Trap please. is committed. He can try and break the front with the Void Rays once the extra one gains the charge again. It's just about to hit, but the Marines find this pylon. They find this force of units, and they can't stay there. Flash will push this away, and Trap has got to find another angle somehow, but I don't know how he can. I, I think if Flash realized that this is still a one-base trap, with only 222 probes, you would just take two medivacs, kill a lone marine out, get steam pack, just win. Or just win right out as soon as he gets uh, medivacs. Trap really putting his piloting tests, uh, skills to the test here. As this Oracle, again, trying to dart around, but it goes very, very low. Has to jump out of the battle for now. He's down to two Void Rays. I, I don't know how he can do it with that little firepower. Yes, he can bring down the uh, A bunker, two bunkers yeah. pretty quickly with the charge, but once you're going up against 26 Marines. Ooh, Flash. Uh, don't get too cheeky here. Yeah, you don't want to move out from the safety of those. He actually catches some of the Marines with a, with a force field. Very, very well placed. The Zealots at the front, in tandem with these Void Rays, will kill off a good chunk of those Marines. Guardian Shield is going to help a lot against these many Marines, but there is not nearly enough Zealots, you know, to tank at the front for those Void Rays and, you know, units behind to do the work. He had six Marines on Valid, and they will now move forwards to the front. But he's still got to be mindful of his main base because those yeah. Void Rays are looking for uh, those cheeky little points where they can get a few SCVs for their troubles. And actually, those Void Rays could get very, very stuck here. One of them is going to fall by the looks of things. It's going to be very, very close to getting oh. out, but it doesn't. Another big pickup for Flash. <laughs> Trap getting frustrated here. Yeah. Starting to realize that... Uh, it's going to be really tough for him to, to win this game. He's still going to go for it with the bust at the front. He's actually accumulated a massive amount of sentries and zealots to tank for his Void Rays. Got to repeat it, Trap still on one base, as we were mentioning before. This yeah. is all a do or die here for Trap in game four. Of course, he has a game in hand, but Flash is catching up. He drops the scan. He still sees no Nexus. All Flash has to do from here on out is defend. He's got four bunkers at the front. SCVs have been pulled up. Four shields go down, trying to separate the SCVs and the extra Marines from those bunkers. If he can bring those down maybe he can power on forwards but those zealots going to work at the front they will be brought down and that void rate is almost dead cannot be breaking that position too much yet oh flash i don't think he can Ooh. move out just yet yeah a few of those marines will die again extra line of force fields but now he doesn't have many force fields left to him here yeah. steam pack is about to finish guy and plus one is on the way here as well a starport is gonna 
get on the way here momentarily for Flash as, as soon as he completes too many bags, this game's completely over. The Oracle's still alive somehow, some way. Drops the scan on the gold. What are you doing here, Trap? Are you continuing on? It looks like he's going to have to as Force Fields litter the field again to try and push on, but he can't just yet. Those two Oracles still being so annoying in the main. Flash, as long as he does not mess up, I do think he's going to be able to win yeah. this game. Trap has a massive ground army, but I mean, no upgrades. Not that much energy on the sentries and only one single Void Ray behind this to do the job. Against three bunkers, against three bunkers. The Force Field is going to have to be pristine to shut this down. He lays them down in such a way that will kill off one of these bunkers. He might have to retreat back though. It's going to have to be a slow paced push forwards here yeah. for him to try and kill this off. Combat Shield is on the way, two Widow Mines at a time. Flash, if you just sit at home, you're going to win this game, and I think he's going to do just that. Yeah. He wants to equalize the score here. The Starpot switching over. He could even just get a Viking and a Medivac, but he's going to go for the Medivacs. Keep it all of it. Obviously, because he has Stim, he needs to make sure all those units are healed once he goes for it. And Trap, well, another scan is going to drop down on this army and just reveal once yeah. again how much he has to combat here. It's crazy how these Oracles still find a way to do damage, even though they are turrets in middle lines. I, I really feel like at this point, Terrence should start accepting that Oracles are that strong that you need to get a second turret, much yeah, like yeah. Zerg did with Phoenixes and started getting two spores per base. Exactly, exactly. If you can control them as well as Trap has been doing here, uh, it's very, very strong. But Combat Shields is now about to finish. Extra Marines are on the way. He's up to almost 40 at this point. The Oracles okay. are still catching some. These Butchers, man. It's, they are menaces. He is the Oracle God. <laughs> Somehow, some way, he keeps finding kills. He's going to go for another bunker, trying to divide and conquer. Cross the T on this left hand side, brings one bunker down, and he's going to get a few Marines on this right hand side, whilst a lot of cornered on this left. Trap is doing this well, considering the position he's in, but Flash still has a huge number of units, yeah. and he's going for the drop. This could be the nail in the coffin here for Trap, because he has pretty much nothing at the home to compete. Yeah, contest he doesn't that. have a Mothership Core, and uh, Trap, I don't know what, he what he's waiting for here. I think he's waiting for a miracle for Flash to maybe move out so he could force fill him and kill him. But even then, there's Phoenixes that could pick up those units. And as you said, the nail in the coffin going to be that one medivac with eight marines in it. He could have actually dropped Widow Mines, but instead, I guess he chose yeah. to uh, to not do that and he, go for the marines. He dropped another scan at the natural, confirms that there is still no natural base and just has to hold on. But here comes the medivac into that mineral line, killing off these probes at the back. And Trap surely has to concede very soon. He's going to go for one last push to try and bring down these bunkers, but the army dies. GG! Ties it up 2-2, and we are going to the ace game in day number two, just as we did in game one. And Flash is going to take a break. And at the moment here in Katowice, the crowd says it all. They are very behind Flash moving on to the round of eight. But this man on screen, once again, Trap, could easily power on through. He's shown some good games. He's shown tenacity, very aggressive plays here in this best of five so far. But can he round it out on expedition loss? That's the question. So far, each player that has picked a map has lost on it. And now expedition lost. Hasn't been picked by anyone. Actually, it was just the last map that was there. So it's only fair to say it's going to be 50-50. There it is. 50-50, man. All right. Our final break here of the Intel Extreme Masters Day 2, and when we're back, the conclusion of Flash versus Trap.
One final game to decide here, the full extent of our round of eight moving on through in the Intel Extreme Masters. A huge thank you to everyone who came out here today in game and day number two. Such passionate fans here in Poland, in Katowice, as we now get into our final game of the day between Flash and Trap. When Flash to rule them all, is it going to come true? We shall find out. We shall find out. It may, it may come true, unless we see an immortal all-in and the, the rocks with the back door being <laughs> scared. <laughs> all right, clairvoyant Todd. Calm down, calm down. Trap doesn't seem to want to play too, much, too many micro games here against Lash. He's been struggling against the drops. He's in a hurry. He wants to get pierogi, and all will be fine from there. All right, game number five. Expedition Lost is our map. Flash tying things up after a very, very strong hold in game number four. Let's get into it. The final game here of the round of 16 at the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship, as we have spawning down to the bottom left-hand corner, our red Protoss, representing Jin Air Green Wings. It is Trap. And potentially for one final time here, at the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship has our blue Terran representing KT Rolster. Give it up for Flash. After these games, like after these first four maps, if I was Flash here, I'd just try to take it to the, to the longer game, no matter what. Like it's what he's been doing, but maybe going that extra mile with the scouting, you know, because I, I feel like maybe he's not been putting the best effort into, for example, scouting what was out on the map, you know, scanning here and there. It's really how, you know, the thing I was talking about, his annoyment at how it can be difficult to see exactly what the Protoss player is going for. And by the look of things, we're going to have another command center first. Oh my God, I can't believe. <laughs> Trap didn't try to proxy a single time or to do some kind of rush because... Yeah. Flash is just a massive fan of the command center first. He just loves it. Yeah, he has been absolutely loving it. You're right. And that does give him, obviously, a very, very strong economic edge to start things off. But at the same time, of course, it makes those starting points a little bit shaky uh, when it comes to the defense. Of course, though, he has gotten away with it for now. Trap is just checking his main base to make sure that Flash is doing nothing absolutely insane and out of the blue. Is Trap going to go again for some kind of uh, quick double gas energies? Not so far. Everything looks normal here, out of trap, and Flash right in his comfort zone here. Well, Command center first, probably gonna, be, uh, gonna go for, you know, the double racks and then the third one. There's a huge difference, really, between winning and losing this game. Not only WCS points, not only big jumps in the prize pool from the round of eight, uh, 16 to 8, but also keeping your hopes alive for the, the ultimate goal here at the tournament, which is $68,000 for first place. Of course, the lineup is so, so stacked, but these two don't come in and they're just like, well, you know, I'll, I'll give it a good go, I'll give it a good bash. Uh, they are right up there. They're right up there with some of the very best of them. And we'll see if who is going to be moving on. Flash now doing a pretty good job of blocking this location, although he's actually going to engineer in Bay Block back to Flash's old tricks. Yeah, actually winning winning this match here and qualifying for the, the round of eight is $3,000 prize instead of $1,000. So it's all right. this is basically a $2,000 best of one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're Not down bad. to that, are we? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least for Trap, he didn't cancel the Zealot in going for this Nexus and anticipated that yeah. block coming along. So he was able to clean that up pretty quickly. And I don't think that Flash realized that he needs a bunker very quickly here, or Ooh. does he feel confident enough to, to just hold that with the Marines and up the ramp? Killer Probe gets himself an SCV kill and is going to head onto the left-hand side towards the rocks, actually. Uh, and it looks like he's on an attack move, so he's actually going to start attacking those with that. That's uh, interesting. <laughs> he, um, he might start working on that pretty aggressively with some of his yeah. units and catch Flash off guard later on. If Trap does some damage there and then follows this up with like an Oracle or something, this could be quite deadly here. Another SCV kill. Zealot's going to have to run on back to the safety of the Mothership Corps, as those Marines wanted to pursue, but uh, it's a little bit difficult with that being there. Flash reacts. Needs to pull back a little bit. It's going to make sure he catches that Zealot, and then three Marines can deal with the Mothership Corps. Yeah, and even saves the SCV there as well. So there was cool delay tactics there for Trap employed to try and deal with that uh, and maybe put on a little bit of extra pressure. But Trap going back home and going for Robo Facility, whilst the probe is 
doing his thing. Yeah, actually playing really standard here for Trap might really surprise Flash, who, if he gets a little bit too paranoid, you know, gets a turret in there just because of all that has happened with the Oracles, could play right into Trap's hand, but I don't think that Flash is going to fall for it. You know, he's getting the eBay now, but uh, I feel like at most he would get, like, what, one turret up just to be safe, maybe even keep his Marines in each base to make sure no Oracle can fly in and do some damage. Whereas Trap, from here, I mean, Trap can play pretty much any style. Like, back at MLG, he was playing a lot of different stuff. He was playing a lot of with Colossus up against Pulse. He definitely, you know, can play very standard, but no. Uh-oh. It's going to be a lot of the Terran's biggest fear, including Funka. Uh -huh. <laughs> he actually tweeted about it. <laughs> and... Yeah, that back door with uh, an immortal attack oh. is what we might see. Well, the SAR has been spotted. That probe viciously going to work yeah. at those rocks. Do you think Flash already knows immortals are coming? Uh, well, I mean, the probe's doing quite a bit of damage, so he's been pretty eager to get that down. That probe is paving the way, Kailaris. Paving the golden road for the immortals to begin that little choo-choo train, or I guess the rails, uh, depending on who you are. But anyway... He's going to accrue a pretty strong army here with the Immortals being added on. Uh, and obviously, you know, Flash, very, very known for having a lot of uh, Marauders actually mixed into his composition. So yeah. uh, if they do work out well against it. Where are the additional gates, though? And why is Trap mining so much gas? You don't need three gases with this. And two gases are enough, you know, to get a lot of yeah. Zealots and Sentries to then go into Stalkers a little bit later on. Guess bit weird. Space control. If he has more space control, then it, it could work well as well. But Flash is actually playing pretty scared against Oracles. He's getting turrets, yeah. which is not going to help against an immortal all-in. So Trap, he's worked this entire series really well with Oracles. He's put fear in Flash's eye. Flash is paranoid from these Oracles, and he's done something that might cost him a lot here. Yeah, and the army is moving all the way out. Oh, if actually, okay, so the Stalker spots that, uh, and now Trap can move out, because if he pinned that in whilst he was going to work yeah. on the rocks, then that would have been catastrophic there for Trap. Trap's going to need uh, great force fields in order to fight this well. But Flash, with one single Marine spots this, he's going to start pulling back. Trap cannot let this army get away. He's going to uh -oh. try to trap it. But Flash, he might just be able to get away, yeah. which is great for him, because right now he knows exactly what might be coming. He's getting a bunker around the back door. And I think Trap might just transition from there. He says, you're going to be ready. Yeah. Starts the Twilight Council. I, I completely understand. You don't want to put your life, uh, tournament life on the line with an attack like this that might not even work once it's been spotted this early and hasn't even started working on the back rock. So, uh, of course, the probe did for a while, but that's by the by. These Immortals now are going to tear this down pretty quickly. Two barracks, uh, two bunkers are on the way up at the top yeah. there. And the bio is already well in position to greet this. A lot of SCV is being pulled as well here. Flash is playing really scared in that last game, but as long as he doesn't die, and I don't think he will, he will survive on in this game to take it to the later stages. You know, as long as you reach Medivacs, he can start dropping left and right. He can do his own thing. But Trap, he's trying something once again, something that he has tried before and didn't bring him success. He's going to go for Charge Lots and High Templars, possibly. We've seen him get Archons sometimes instead of High Templars because he was a little bit scared. But at this time, I really think that to have a better chance, he should go for High Templars with Storm. A lot of my, uh, mining time being lost here for Flash, actually, on both sides oh, of this. Oh, the scan sees nothing. Yeah, uh, that's not the best of situations. He sees a lot of gas coming in from the natural. Maybe that will prompt him to go back to mining, because right now he's not. He, uh, he really need Because he was down... Uh, he was up in workers, yes, but that's a lot of lost mining time. So now yeah. goes back to work. Actually, Trap with those war prisms is, is really insane. Like, it's like watching, you know, Liquid Hero in his prime sometimes. He does so much damage, he controls it so well, and I think he's just going to wait for Flash to leave his base. So far, he's only seen two Medivacs fly by, so he's going to wait with it still. But yeah, here's the move out. Trap's going to wait a little bit for Flash's army to be in the middle of the map, and then he's going to drop those Zealots, and at the same time, try to take good fights back at home. And with Storm halfway through done, yeah. surely this attack won't hit before Storm is completed, and then it's going to be a disaster for Flash, who has no idea. And he saw the two medevacs on the left-hand side with the watchtower as well. So he's positioning his army to greet that and then shut that down. He doesn't have that much have that much anti-air, but if it moves in and starts dropping units off, he'll crush it very quickly. Yeah, the zealots actually were dropped here to take out uh, the command centers. This is going to be defended. This is the drop in the main as well. Does get pushed back whilst this war prism is going on in with just the one zealot. Uh, that's actually quite a big warp in uh, to, uh, to greet only three marines that yeah. he did actually just spot there with and, the one zealot. And he's going to send the one zealot at the third base at the same time to make sure he can delay that even more. So Trap 
He's got his own third base on the way, and he's slowing down Flash and weak, tr are trying to weaken his economy at least. And good moves considering. 54 probe to 48 at the moment. And uh, he got maybe one or two kills there for his troubles. And this army is looking strong now because Storm is done, because extra high Templars yeah. are warping in, and he already has six on the field gaining energy. Storm is done, and Flash has seen neither a Colossus or a High Templar. Right now, he has no idea. He's not going to be getting a Ghost Academy anytime soon. Oh, well, that ran in, uh, into a bit of a precarious spot. Unfortunately, does fall there for Trap. He's moving the rest of his army around to the yeah, right He's going side. for a timing. Uh, Six High Templars are on the map, Kailash, and Flash still has no idea. Oh, Caps is an immortal that will be reinforcing. But if he can get a good engagement up front, if he can land some good storms, he might be able to shut the rest of this down. It was very segmented off, actually. What's the army here? Drops a storm. Doesn't hit a whole lot. Flash going to try and retreat back. Gets a few more units. Costs another storm. Will hit on top of that ramp and catch some of the my bio. Oh my god, those units are so low on hit points here for Flash, who might have to pull some SCVs, but I mean, still no ghost inside. He's trying to get enough units out to be able to defend that. Uh, 58 army supply for Trap, 56 for Flash, but still so many storms available. Still so many storms. SCV is going to come off the line. Flash knows he's in a lot of trouble here. Storm hits some of that army on the right hand side. There's a trap at the moment. He's gaining a little bit of momentum, and there's a big, big storm. Will catch a lot of the SCVs as well. Extra storm lands on some of this. He's delaying the third base while all this is going on. Will he be able to clean up, though? On every angle, units are coming in left and right, but he has very little left to his name here, does Flash. This army has absolutely ransacked the main base. Zealots continue on. Flash is struggling to hold this. And I don't think he's going to be able to because Trap is on top of the production. GG. Trap takes the series 3-2 to two and moves on to the round of eight. Very well managed last game. Completely playing to his image. Trap says, well, you're probably going to be scared of oracles. Even I didn't anti anticipate that. I thought that Flash might be able to realize, you know, that Trap would play to his image. But Flash thought, well, he only made oracle and only cheese me. He's going to do it again. But no, he actually went for Storm and picked a good opportunity. Just because it wasn't scouted for this long, it was that strong. Also, getting the command center on the on that third base location, on this map, it's really a far away third base. Flash definitely could have picked the routes, you know, of uh, getting a commensator around his natural or main, make it safer, because he wasted a lot of time with that, and that was time that he could have been spending across the map, getting the information, putting some pressure on. And again, you cannot play against a Protoss for this long without knowing whether he's going Colossus or High Templar, because you need to react to those things. I think it's a, a really, really important thing that you noted through that series. Uh, and it was how Trap portrayed himself throughout that whole series. He portrayed himself as a player that was very, very aggressive, really wanted to be in his face all the time. And in game five, that came to the culmination. The amount of prep that Flash put into that defense, yeah. the, the, how on edge he clearly was. At both of those, okay, he lost so much mining time at both of those positions for ages and ages and ages. And yes, it did put him back. It didn't quite kill him off, of course. That's not going to kill him off, but it did put him back quite severely. Flash played really defensively overall. You yeah. know, he tried to react, but against somebody like Trap, who's just so good at playing mind games, who's always proxying something out on the map, he's just so difficult. Unless you get that lucky scout on the map, but he was changing locations all the time, putting uh, most of his proxies actually in kind of weird locations that I didn't even picture myself happening. So that made it very difficult for Flash to deal with that. Very impressive stuff there by Trap, who moves on to the round of eight. Let's hear from him on the stage with Susie. All right, guys, first off, let's hear it for the man who has just beat God. All right, new. speaking of which, you just beat Flash. He, everyone calls him God, you know. Is this win even sweeter just because you were able to beat Flash? Or do you just see him as, eh, just any other player? Uh, 일단... 상대가 처음부터 이용호 선수라서 어, 좀 많은 팬분들이 일방적으로 어, 이용호 선수를 응원할 거라고 생각해서 약간 부담도 됐는데 어, 이렇게 어, 이제 이용호 선수를 꺾고 올라간 만큼 어, 팬분들한테 더 멋진 경기로 보답해야 될것 같아요. 
And he says, actually, you know what, when I saw that my first match was against someone like Flash, he knew that everyone here was going to be cheering for Flash and not for him. And so that was kind of a burden on him. But since he was able to beat Flash and, uh, you know, he's going on to the next round, he feels that he's going to have to make it worth it for you guys and have to keep going on and playing well for you. Okay, now, you guys might know this, but Trap has been to several international tournaments now, and he does really well in Pro League, but it seems like you're not as popular as the other players that are here. What is something special about you that the fans might want to know? I play a game, but a little I Alright, he says, well, and he went right into his play. He says, you, you know, today I played very, um, in a way that I normally wouldn't. And so, you know, I want you guys to watch me, blah, blah, blah. However, and I said, can you give me an, uh, something more personal? And he goes, well, I guess people say I'm, I'm cute. So that's, that's his something special, guys, okay? <laughs> Okay, next opponent. Not only did you take down Brood War Flash, you're going to play against Brood War Fantasy, another Terran player. How prepared are you, and how do you think that matchup's going to be? Uh, Alright, he says, you know what, unfortunately I'm playing another Brood War legend, and, you know, if I beat him, I'm just going to be known as some villain, apparently, but, you know, he's very strong in individual tournaments, and so he's just planning to go as far as he can and, you know, show you good games while he's at it. So, on that note, congratulations to you, and I'm going to send it back to the desk. Thank you very much, Susie. What a pair of cuties there on stage. Oh, that was wow. a very enjoyable time and a great series. The fans even rallied behind him. And you know what? How can you be? A, how can this guy be a villain if he's playing his heart out, showing off the skills that he did? A very really good job here, shown by Trap. Uh, let's let's talk and break down the series here. It was very scrappy back and forth. A couple of games where we're like, well, maybe Flash has this game. No, Trap had it, or even <laughs> vice versa. Uh, Ryder, why don't you be in this, this, begin the discussion here? Because there's plenty of points that you want to talk about. All right, game number one. We can just go get through and get going, go pretty much through every game because I think all five games were very interesting. But I think game number one, it started off horrible for Trap. I felt first Flash was like, okay, missile turret. DTs maybe and then Flash like nah you're going blink stalkers and then the first time he went in he just went in too deep he lost the mothership core and normally losing your mothership core with a one base all in like that's almost the end normally it's all ogre yeah. but it was not all ogre because the second time he just walked past the bunkers then he got into the ramp and he kept shooting kept kiting kept shooting kept kiting and actually did pretty damn well then he jumped to the low ground and Flash probably looked at it like well that didn't go very well, but you know, he can't do that again. I'm still on two orbitals. And then a mothership core shows up, so Flash moves everything to the low ground. Then he blinks in the main base again, and that's where it truly spiraled out of control, uh, which was crazy because normally, you know, like you don't expect them to remake the core on one base and still go for it, push the issue that hard. Yeah. So, unfortunate loss for Flash and an unnecessary one, but nice use of the map there and exploiting some dirty protos tricks by Trip. And he went DTs at the same time. He remade the mothership core <laughs> and went DTs while doing a one base blink stalker all in. Yeah. Uh, when like the Protoss doctrine is like, no, 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 every <laughs> single ounce of gas is absolutely <laughs> precious. Remaking the mothership core is speculative. It's like, yeah. I don't know that that's actually the right call. And in this case, it was the winning move. It was unexpected, as Kevin pointed out. It was, yeah, it was yeah really I feel like usually in this situation, we see Terran players uh, lift up their orbital, just go safely to one base. And one thing that I noticed about Inferno Pools is the fact that, theoretically, Flash could have just lifted to the island and drop the orbital that down the there. But either way, trying to hold uh, two orbitals in these positions against one base, Blink Stalker all in, is so difficult. Yeah. And I think maybe if he wouldn't have picked up the core, then uh, he would have actually just lifted up to the high ground. And it's like, all right, you know, I'm just going to sit on one base for now because defending both locations is pretty difficult. But after he killed the core, he's like, well, okay, now I'm just going to defend the nature. I got two bunkers yeah. there anyway. So, you know, whatever. Anyways, interesting game number one. 
crazy build. Inferno Pool is a very difficult map. Did not think Proto was going to win it, but well, he brought out a special, a Proto special. And then we go into game number two where Flash somehow found a pretty weird spot to drop. And <laughs> in control was yes. the one that was just like, wow, I can't believe he actually managed to get in there. What exactly happened there? That was a breakdown from uh, Trapson. I mean, he was able to circle around all the typical spots you would drop and then come in the main mineral side into the main base. And I, 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 I could feel Trap's emotions like escape out into the universe, and all the Protoss players felt him cry out at once. Like, we, we all were like, oh, God. Yeah. He's not supposed to be there with five medevacs or whatever it was. He's four plus. <laughs> Trap but was... credit to, to Flash. That's, a, that's right. an amazing move. And he didn't even broadcast. I don't know that there was a main sca uh, scan. At least not until just seconds before he dropped to make sure there's nothing there, but it was amazing. And Trap was going for the one thing that would completely shut down drop play, and then Flash just sneaks all of his yeah. medevacs on the left-hand side of Vani. Mm -hmm. It's a very unexpected move, but so good in a tournament like this. It's just things like this that you don't normally think about. Well, well to that's Snoot's point, too, that the, that was the super mega tragic part about that. He, was, he had like nine Phoenix. He was doing amazing work with the dual, actually the triple, yeah, triple Oracle. Oracle. It was yeah. just sick to watch. And then he was setting up Charizard Archon double Robo Colossus. Like, he was in a position, in my opinion, to just destroy Flash. Like, if Flash tried to drop with the natural, if he tried a more frontal assault, I think he gets wrecked. But he dropped in, I feel like, the one place he could have to win that game, and then he won the game. So another game where, again, the momentum was shifted. Going to game number three, then we saw, you know, Catalina. Of course, we're like, oh, yeah, sure, Terran can drop whatnot. <laughs> yeah. But we saw Protoss Trap. He was putting up six or seven cannons. He <laughs> blinked underneath the medevacs. He had a mothership core in position for the photon overcharge. And it was like, and still, Flash's drop destroyed him. Uh, and then forced him to position was really awkward. But then... We had some like awkward battles were there, and then all of a sudden mm -hmm. we had the final battle with the Colossus hiding. What happened there, Kev? I mean, like we keep saying about how good Catalina is for drops because of all the dead air space and you know like the difference the, between heights, low ground, natural, third base. But then like on a certain point, if a Protoss opponent sits on double forge, two base, and builds <laughs> seven cannons yeah. over those two base, you might want to say like, hey, I know this is a really good map to drop, but maybe I should just actually <laughs> expand because those seven cannons, that's like two extra guys, orbitals. He guys, can have two more bases. I got bad news for you. This game showed that actually seven cannons is not <laughs> enough. Like, well, we're going to have a crazy game where there's like a line of nine of them, and they're like, I don't know. Yeah. Flash did it, I guess. The thing know? is, though, like Flash did not have to lose so many units with those kind of drops. Yeah. Right. He should have been like the bigger Terran and get the ghost rolling, get the Viking production, you know, in overcoil. Sure. Because yeah. like that is a ridiculous amount of minerals. Like that's not supposed to happen. I do that because I can't defend against drops. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the crazy part about all of this is that even after all the dropping action, mm -hmm. it still felt like the game was pretty even. Maybe yeah. even in, fa in favor yeah. of Flash. But then Trap showed some really nice skills with the force fields and the uh, delaying, right. and especially hiding the Colossi behind the Nexus, forcing the yes. Vikings to land. Yeah. I think Flash forgot about the fact that the Colossi were even there. Yeah, I think we actually different. have a segment for this, so mm -hmm. Jeff, why don't you go ahead and take it away, because this is sure. a really cool moment. Look at that army supply, 126, 92. But Flash is like, hey, I don't see any Colossus. I am so <laughs> in love with this move. We talked about the hiding of the Colossus. That meant that the Vikings actually get duped into landing here in yeah. a second. But these force fields, it's a seal off, and it's a four force field seal off here. As you can see, Flash is going to go up against it. But again, by hiding the Colossus, Flash is in mega competitive mode. He's like, no, I don't need to pull back. There's no AoE here. And then he kind of trickles in. The Colossus now reveal themselves, but the Vikings are already on the ground. Flash is wasting APM, yep. or not APM, excuse me, but damage done here in that time. And with those force fields and the photon overcharge, he thins out the Vikings to a level that the Colossus yep. are able to do the damage. Look at that. Yep. They're hitting Marauders. They're hitting Marines. If Flash disengages, lets the Colossus die, then goes into this fight, I think there might have been a different outcome. But again, look at those upgrades that are amazing observer right here. Funka is showing us. I mean, that's a, what is that, a three upgrade advantage? Yeah, no, it's three, two, one. Yeah, it's, <laughs> uh, it's actually four. It's a four upgrade advantage, and that's gigantic. So that's obviously a big deal here. It's still close, and Flash is starting to pull back. But those upgrades, the tanky Archons, it's just too much. Another perfectly executed defense here. I mean, we actually saw the flip side of this earlier in the tournament where we saw Rain. the Proto. No, actually, no, no excuse Rain me, not the flip side. Thing. Rain's defense. Thank you. That was, it was, we've seen two SCV poles get shut down by really cool decision making inside it. And I'll tell you what, that's so refreshing too because in so many of the tournaments we see SCV poles, and I'm guilty of this, I roll my eyes and I'm just like, oh, it's just such a simple and basic situation. Does he have Storm or not? Well, Flash and these other god tier StarCraft players laugh at us, at least this plebeian, and it's like, no, there's so much going on there, and we see it here. Just beautiful play. Yeah, eloquently put, uh, and that set up for game number four, where we saw 
Uh, a throwback, where it was like a Void Ray trying to bust the, bust the front there with a lot of pressure. Didn't end up working out, and Flash was able to hold, but I, th I think you also were making some pretty good observations of like how Flash did everything perfectly to try and defend. It was like, what, you said it was the sickest read of the tournament. I Rotterdam. love Kevin's call. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I really like that, because normally, no matter how crazy the builds that you see, you still kind of just take normal. Maybe you go three racks instead of two racks, but you're still yeah. like, oh, I want to get my steam. I get a reactor on one of my barracks. If Flash would have played it out normally, <laughs> there's a very good chance. I don't think Flash sounds like that, but you know. In, <laughs> no, I'm that's the other people. The non-Flash yeah, yeah. sound like yeah. that. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. like, you know, he would have like seven to 12 Marines and yeah. then like three Void Rays and two Oracles fly in. The moment that turret is gone, you're gone as a Terran. There's nothing. Yeah. Flash picked up on it very quickly. He's like, I don't need gas right now. I don't need any upgrades. What I need is Marines. And I don't care that they don't have combat shield. I don't care that they don't have stim. I need as many Marines as possible. And that was a really, really good call. I, lo I love the analysis on that, and I agree with it fully. And I, I actually like it in kind of the broader strokes, too, is like, in this sense, Flash looked past what is the... Yeah conception of what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to, oh, I need Stim. If yeah. I don't have Stim, I'm dead. If I don't, once I get Medivax out, that's when I can win the game. Flash put that off and, and made the right call here. But let's not forget earlier, Snoop made the comment, and I fully agree with it. Had he possibly picked up his natural, what, two or three games earlier and gone into the main and not tried, game number one, and not tried to hold off the Bling Stalker all in, he might have actually just simply won this series, but he made the wrong call there. And, and what I take mm -hmm. from that is that Flash, who is so creative, so brilliant, and so good, Again, in a, in a tough match like this, with a player like Trap who's really pushing the envelope and doing different builds and really threatening him in different ways, he can make mistakes too. And I think that speaks volumes to the complexity and difficulty of StarCraft. And I just I love that we're witnessing it at such a high level here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and as you mentioned, it's really cool to see the wide range of builds that Trap actually brings out. <laughs> we saw everything from Haas like yep. cheese builds, such as the one on Overgrowth, to some really heavy yep. macro builds like the one on Vani. So this is going to be really useful for Trap. I hope he didn't reveal everything he knows because he's going up against Fantasy next, another yeah. turn. So the question will be, does he have even more strategies prepared? Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, uh, sorry, just to go, uh, go further on what Snoo just said. Like sometimes when you watch games, I don't know if you guys do it as well, but you don't actually look at the name tag, you just look at the play style. And you're like, ah, I think it's, you know, this play play. Like you don't even have to see it. Like if I see Swarmos and Creeps, you know, very really well done. I know it's not in a certain position, but <laughs> with Trap, that's impossible to call. Because one moment you think you're watching Sad Art here, and the next moment you're watching <laughs> Zest in his prime. Like he does everything from like the craziest cheeses to really legit solid macro play. And I've really seen a Protoss play that truly excels on both ends of the spectrum. It's often some guys are extremely yeah, good right. in cheese, some guys are extremely good in macro. You could say parting is one of them, but I feel that Trappist cheeses are even more extreme than anything that parting does. I feel like there's a lot of variety in his cheese. We saw, yep. we saw Stargate uh, and a lot of Oracle usage as well. His Oracles yeah, his are terrifying, sick. by it's the so way. Sick. Great control and great series once again as Trap advances over Flash. 3-2 to two and has a date with Fantasy tomorrow along with Wrong. three other matches. Days. Ooh, that's right. <laughs> very, very well played, Jeff. <laughs> Here we go. We have CJ Hero versus Byung, a team kill over in the round of eight in the top left quadrant. Then we have Zest versus Innovation, another KT versus SK Telecom. Then we have Trap versus Fantasy, as we've mentioned in the past few minutes, followed by, in my opinion, the coolest yeah. matchup in the round of eight, Morrow versus Dark. Dark being the last Zerg in Katowice, and of course, we're going to have to cling on to Snoot here to help us through that, because I think it's going to be a really fun series to watch. And Dark's ZVT is sick, so, and, and Maru is possibly the greatest TVZ player. Mm -hmm. He's up there, at, at least in the top three, the very short list, so... I, and, and also, you know, that's probably the marquee matchup, but Zest Innovation, I mean, those are two of the biggest names for each of the races, mm -hmm. bar none. True. Innovation's on the ultimate short list, he's up there. And then Zest, at points in, the, in, in time and discussion, was the best player in the world, for God's sakes. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, what do you think about the round of eight? <laughs> it looks awesome, man. It looks super awesome. we got a CJ and his team kill that has happened before. I think, you know, if I'm looking at it, I think Hero's a favorite in that one. I'm super pumped for Zest versus Innovation, even though Zest has to step it up more. He was awesome in game three, four, five against Hydra. Needs to be even better tomorrow against mm -hmm. Innovation. Yeah. Maru Dark, I, I think it's going to be damn awesome as well. I'm leaning more towards Maru. I think some of you more towards Dark, but I think it's an amazing... Schedule. <laughs> schedule. Schedule. <laughs> schedule. <laughs> no, 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 but BQP told it's schedule uh, uh, by our producers. Uh, this is the schedule for tomorrow, <laughs> by the way. Wow. Trap versus so fantasy. <laughs> so edgy. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> trying to take the unpopular opinion here. Morrow versus Dark at 2.30 p.m. Hero versus, uh, Hero versus Byung, and then Zest versus Innovation. 
but we'll also do the semifinals. Yeah. As we lose our advanced graphics there, 7 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. We're going to finish up the semifinals because on the last day, we'll be playing Just in the, the Spodek Arena for the grand finals where we find who the winner will be for Season 9 as well as getting 68,000 U.S. dollars on top of 1,500 WCS that, points. Lots That's like five casino trips for, for Roger Davis, <laughs> if you think about it. That's a five, lot five of money. Five and a half. Five and a half, probably, yeah. 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 Oh, well, what can I say? Guys, we've had a pretty long day. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit, just have final words here. Snoot, what was your favorite moments of the day or anything you want to talk about before we go? Uh, <laughs> I'm spinning. Got him again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think the games were great uh, all around. Um, yeah, <laughs> my apologies. All right, we'll come back to you, Jeff. I think, so I'm going to give people a little bit of a glimpse behind the scenes. My favorite moment of today was we were all getting ready for the games. Mm -hmm. Snoot was a little bit nervous because PBT, and there's a lot, there's three PBTs there. <laughs> he was not sure what he wanted to do. So Snoot, I know, <laughs> innocent, gorgeous, handsome little, you know, Viking that he is, goes up to Todd and says, Todd, like, can you help me out with some, some of these matchups? And Todd goes... <laughs> Doug goes, well, yeah, but I mean, if you're not comfortable, I can, I can take the analysis part. He's like, no, no, it's fine. I'll, I'll do it. And he goes, you know, tell me about Maru or something like that. And, and Todd goes, well, no, I'm going to cast that match. <laughs> and uh, Stu didn't quite get it. He's like, he's like, well, what do you, you know, just tell me, give me some ideas. And he goes, like, no, I'm not going to give you my information. I'm going to cast. <laughs> and Todd walked away. And I, I just, I love... If you know Todd at all, that's so Todd. And if you know Snoot, that's so Snoot. And <laughs> it came together. And that's the beautiful esports family that we have. And five seconds later, it's like as if it never, nothing ever happened, right? No, and then Snoop kicked, kicked butt. He did yeah. great. He did and great. And so did Todd. Snoop. Todd dropped some serious knowledge bombs up there. Mm. And, of course, uh, one person firmly behind that, too, is Ryder Dam. Do you have any final words for the day? Um, no, our highlights, I guess, you mean? Uh, overall, yeah. it was a really fun day. I mean, like, I enjoyed it. We had three amazing PVT series. The first one was indeed a little bit of a bop, but Maru, I can enjoy a good bop on its time. I don't want to see non-stop bops, but, you know, just one guy absolutely dominating. I, I can deal with it. I think Hero played very well. I think it was a very entertaining series, but I think, again, just like yesterday, we saved the best for last. I think the final series was really exciting, and even that Game 5, man. That Game yeah. 5 could have gone either way. That's storm. Well. Great series. Mm. Yeah, so awesome. Overall, really fun day, but tomorrow, six best Five. No, it's gonna be sick. <laughs> That's right, uh, Snoot. You have the closing words yeah, here from well, the desk before I send this off. I just gotta say, the night is warm and the the epic never-ending yeah. bunker yeah, was truly. Oh, yeah, that was an awesome. Game. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was funny because the commentators literally <laughs> came away from the bunker, <laughs> then they came back to it. And they're like, he's still repairing it. They're like, let's talk about this other aspect of the game, and it just kept going. Yeah, right. the, the rest of the series had a few too many hellbats for my taste, but mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to the CVT series tomorrow. I agree. Yeah. Dark, yeah. Dark versus Maru is going to be massive for all the Zerg fans out there. So I think even that as Protoss fans, like. You're excited for that one, honestly. I'm a pop. I am. Dar I, I, I kind of, even as a Protoss guy, though, I don't want to see the Zerg go. I want Zerg <laughs> into the top four. Like, it makes it more interesting, you know? So. I absolutely agree there. We've had a lot of fun games from uh, the game number one between Solar and Beyond all the way to the finish of Flash versus Trap. It's been a delight. And, of course, if you guys missed anything, make sure to catch all of our full coverage with the Score Esports. The app is on smartphones, iOS, and Android. Download it and get all the interviews and auxiliary content that's been provided by them, as well as all of the sponsors that's been part of the Intel Extreme Masters experience with HyperX, BenQ, Gigabyte Intel, and Rocket. And also a big shout out to Blizzard as they've been supporting us all the way through. We're done here. So from the ESO production crew, from Ryodan, Snoot, and In Control, and Frodan, have a good night, and we'll see you tomorrow for the round of eight. You're saying Rocket, right? Isn't it? It's Rocket. Is it Rocket?